Welcome to Race like Podcast. To this, is your, this is your virtual big brother, Ray Cuyaso. Race talk show helps you find wealth in your voice through career satisfaction and personal fulfillment. Thank you so much for joining us. And on Ray's talk show, we love to help people understand the power of their story and how they can share those lessons to not only build their own brand and and uh, build their careers, but truly change lives. And today's guest has a great passion and skill for telling his story while bringing the energy. Anthony Manaya, welcome to Race Talk Show, brother. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Looking forward to this. No, it's an honor. No, it's an honor. Much respect to our mutual homie, Joe Pardo, uh, who brought us together at the Mid-Atlantic Podcast Conference in the fall uh, last year. It's coming up yeah, again. Yeah. Uh, in the fall, and uh, last time I saw Anthony in person, he was schooling. I was telling us before he started recording, show him some <laughs> schooling some young boys in a in a in an impromptu uh, 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 flag tag football game, and he was wearing like a print, uh, you know, a press shirt and and shoes. So he was doing some big things there with uh, not the right equipment, but he was he was doing his thing. For those that aren't familiar, Anthony Manaya is an artist, entrepreneur, and storyteller who builds his brand around being raw and authentic. We're going to ask him momentarily what what he means by that mm -hmm. and uh, leading with his bring the energy message which is a fantastic message anthony creates compelling stories on social media that educate and inspire others uh, to become the will winning players that they need to be anthony Ma manaya uh, who i actually yeah. called the yuani cesspit as a social media welcome to race talk show thanks brother thank you so much man great to have you on and <laughs> thanks uh, for having we're gonna me find out. i appreciate you man thank you so much for, for being with us and uh, definitely want to – we're going to learn more about uh, why Anthony's so passionate about people being raw and authentic in their, in their brand and their, in their content creation. But first, Anthony, before you became one of the most provocative social media content creators of your, of your generation, uh, we, we would first like to know, where did the Anthony Manaya journey begin for you? Well, it's all started, man. By the way, this is awesome, man. I, I'm excited about this stuff. Um, and also, if I can get a little bit of thumbs up on this blab, man. Oh, yeah, get the hand. Come <laughs> on, ladies. The, the hands. My young fella. Some hands. Okay. That's so, good for that. I absolutely uh, got you out of that. They'll, so, be, they'll, uh, be, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll, they'll cooperate with you, friend. I love it. I love it. Um, so it started when I was 18, man. Um, I was 18 years old. I was in high school. I was uh, playing for a football team. I was a uh, quarterback for um, one of the a team called Evander Tigers in uh, Bronx, New York. And um, it all started there, man. I wanted to be in NFL, but I realized that my grades suck and I can't. <laughs> and uh, you need to be good in school to be able to do that. But I was good on the field. And that's where kind of the leadership stuff came about. But I started in network marketing. I don't know if you guys know what's uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the MLM model and sure. um, the network marketing model. Um, yeah, I started off in network marketing. My brother was just one day I was playing Madden. Uh, a football game on Xbox. And then my brother gives me a call. He's like, hey, man, what do you think about, you know, having your own business at 18 years old? And I was just like, whatever. You know, he was like, man, you don't have to work a job. You have to go to school. The real motivator was I didn't have to go to school. Um, you know, the college, college wasn't the thing. And then when you go to the events, uh, at the time when I was 18, they would talk about how, oh, you know, you don't really need a degree to get rich or all this good stuff. And I was like, dude, this is amazing. So, I started from, uh, yeah, from there on, man, from 18 years old and started progressing and started evolving and started, you know, understanding that, you know, maybe this network marketing thing is really not for me. Let me start my own path um, because entrepreneurship really was my thing. So, yeah, man, that's how it all started. You know, it's, it's interesting that your, your story resonates so strongly because oftentimes our kids don't realize that they're that they're that the path is almost never going to be what you're going to expect. Right. And the key is to be able to pivot and understand that you have to take advantages of your skills. So you had a passion for entrepreneurship. You had a passion for hustling. You had a passion for leadership. Mm -hmm. And you realized that, you know, you may not, the traditional path may not work for you, but that doesn't mean you're not going to have a path. You have to and maybe create your own path. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. So Anthony, what gave you the, what gave you the the confidence and the and the ability you think at that age and to not to not try to set yourself up for for failure by going down the path maybe your parents wanted you to or yeah. others would expect you to uh, to create your own your own destiny? 
Well, man, it was just uh, it was just trying to just I just didn't want to work a job, to be honest, man. What was the other alternative, right? What was the other option? Work a job, work at you know, you know, I had a, I had this Staples. Uh, I worked at Staples. I had this internship right from school, and that was the only job I ever really truly had. well. You can call it a job, but that was the only thing I had to go to to report to a boss because it was just. After I experienced that at 18 years old, they're like, hey, man, look, you have to do this as a part of your thing. In order for you to graduate high school, you have to work at Staples or you have to work at these jobs. And so Staples, I was in there. I was, cl- I was cleaning ceilings. I was <laughs> cleaning ceilings. I'm like, who the hell looks at the ceiling anyway? Um, I was organizing this stuff where people, you know what I mean? So that was kind of the, the motivator for me to be like, look, man, I've, I'm not going to work a job ever again. Um, so the network marketing thing was pretty simple when you realize that you have to just be, you know, do your own thing, your own hours, uh, you go out there and it's up to you. So, uh, you know, I did the whole college thing for a semester, um, because my parents wanted me to go. Um, but when I was in college, uh, I would tell my mom, look, this is not for me. This is not for me. And she was like, look, just do a semester, you know, try it out. You never know you like it. Right. So I, I did it. And uh, I actually went to the hospital at the end of those three months uh, for dehydration. But it comes to, it comes, it's funny because I talk about this a lot when I, I tell people, if you're really not loving what you're doing, it's unhealthy for you. If you don't love it, it's unhealthy because you go to it every single day and you're like, That's shit, right. this, this sucks. You know, I don't know if I can curse on the show. That's right. Um, you know, it's, it's only black, brother. Don't worry about it. Uh, got it. Got it. So I was like, man, look. Um, you know, th- this sucks, man. And I, I got dehydrated and I wouldn't drink a lot. I was just thinking I was mm. all in my head. I wouldn't drink. I wouldn't eat. I would throw up. And I had acid in my system. I was throwing up nothing for like three days straight. And, you know, at the end of the third day, I had to go to, um, you know, for those three days, I had to go. I had the test coming up, which was the big test to see if you, I don't know how it works, the college system, but like you take a test and if you pass, I guess you get the credits or whatnot. So I had to take this test and it was stressing me out and I was throwing up. And then during when I was taking the test, I still went in sick and I said, look, I don't feel good. I, I don't I don't feel good. So they sent me to the nurse. The nurse sent me to the hospital because you're like, look, you need to put the IV in you to, to, to rehydrate. And from there, you know, I said, oh, I'm done, man. I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. So it's, it's easy to find the motivation and the drive when you realize, you know, what, what you don't want to do, you know, like, I don't want to be like that guy, or I don't want to be that. I don't want to do that. And then you start getting mm-hmm. motivated to want to build something. And honestly, I had nothing. So, you know, network marketing is a great starting point. And when you start there, you learn the skills and you just go on, go on, go on. And then you adjust along the, the journey. Yeah, no, we, uh, I'll put in the show notes for this episode with uh, Anthony and I bring the energy and, you can find uh, all of his uh, all of his work at, at anthonybadai.co, I believe it is, right? Anthony.co. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that uh, I'll put in the show notes an episode I did about a year ago with one of my uh, frequent contributors, Lisa Santos. Hopefully, Lisa will join us later. I think you two would have a lot of a lot of synergy in, in, in your styles and and uh, the kind of social media content she produces. Great person to follow on chat Snapchat. So check out Lisa on social media if she doesn't come on the show. But we did a show about uh, basically the seven steps to, to, to the seven blessings of being broke. And so we <laughs> talked about how, you know, when you're at your lowest point, it's kind of like in a way the, you have an advantage and you have nothing to lose. You know, you have an opportunity to experiment. And, and like you said, even if it's trial and error a little bit, you can kind of find your path, but you know, you got nowhere to go, you go lose, up, man. You, know? so you got nowhere right. to go so it's, up. Uh, it's actually, yeah. you can create, and you can create your own path, right? Which is, which is the biggest blessing from being in that stage of life. So Anthony, you, you uh, started with some MLN, uh, with some uh, network marketing stuff. And then what, what, uh, what led you to uh, turning towards uh, social media and content creation uh, for your, so your entrepreneurial journey? From the ages of 19 to about 21 years old, I was doing a, uh, traditional network marketing, which is, you know, home meetings and going to train stations and giving out DVDs to go check out information. It was just straight hustle. Yeah, it was insane. And then uh, from when I was around 21, 22, yeah, 21 years old, I transitioned into online marketing when I realized, okay, wow, I can 
you know, sell things online. People could buy online, but this was through capture pages, lead pages, email marketing, um, you know, all this kind of email advertising stuff. And I did that and we crushed that. And for those, when I was 21, 22, I'm 24 right now. So when I was 21, 22, those two years, man, I crushed that, man. I crushed network marketing, made over six figures throughout those two years in that online uh, marketing thing. And um, it was awesome. And then I realized that that wasn't, you see how it's funny how the transition is of how you adjust along the way is I, that I wasn't passionate about that, right? Okay. I'm making a lot of money. I'm young. I'm traveling the world. You know, I'm in a new place every month, you know, traveling these new places, doing events with my team in Bermuda, doing events with my team, you know, in California and all this stuff. And then I realized, you know, this is not what I want to do. I don't want to be known as the network marketing guy, right? And I don't want to be the guy that, and also I was building it differently than everybody else, but I didn't want to be that guy, right? I don't want to be, I wasn't passionate about it. And as soon as you lose passion, and again, I didn't want that same feeling to happen to me and happen to college, even though I was make, making a lot more money, but it's still yeah. that you feel fake, you know? You feel like, oh man, I gotta, you don't want to do the work that it takes to actually succeed. So, from there, I transitioned into doing a social media kind of consulting thing, right? And it, it, but I, I say it like a thing because that's how it started in the beginning. I said, you know what? Since I don't want to do this, I want to teach people how I do this. What most people do is they'll jump on this blab or they'll, you know, watch somebody's content and they'll take their information, regurgitate it a little bit, and then spit it out as if it's their own. What I did was I see the information, right, that, but I, that I learned from my own experience and I talk about it. The problem with me is I, I didn't know how to deliver my information right away. Like, I didn't know the delivery of it, right? I didn't know what this meant. I just uh, put a post up. You know, I, I had to learn all that stuff, but I would learn through experience. I would say, okay, cool. I'll put this thing, this link here. Wow. You know, I didn't know it was called, you know, micro content or content creation. I, you know, I just put out a freaking picture and people love it and then they buy stuff, you know? So like, you know, I had to learn all that terminology myself and I started this little social media and just turned into a little social media company. And then from there, for, the, for those two years, um, I was running, I was helping small businesses, I was helping brands, I was consulting, I was speaking. The event that you went with Joe, he actually found me through one of my uh, Mania Talk episodes I was doing on social media. And, uh, you know, he asked me to speak, you know, that's another, you know, successful thing that happened for me which leads to this, which this can lead to something else. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, I, was, I, was, I was teaching people that. Consult. And then I said, I want to I wanna do this because I want to transition out of the network marketing world, online marketing world, right? I want to educate about social media, but I also want to learn social media by doing. If I help brands, if I help other companies, if I help people who are selling actual tangible stuff, not only info products like I was selling before, um, I will learn a lot. I will learn so much more, right? Because I'm sitting down one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, I'll take my knowledge and I'll take their product and I'll help them, you know, with Facebook advertising, with Instagram, with Snapchat, all that good stuff. And then that's when I transitioned, fully transitioned into filmmaking because uh, during that process, I was making films of myself and I was doing a lot of videos for my you know, social media brand. And I realized, Hey, look, I'm actually good at this. I actually like this. I like, actually like, you know, inspiring people. And this is what I was meant to do because I feel at such a place where I'm, I wanted to build something I was actually good at. Right. I did the social media thing so I can learn, so I can teach people, but I can learn at the same time while I'm teaching. Hey, look guys, I made 20 grand. You know, I helped this company make 20 grand off of this thing and I'll talk about it. I'll talk about it because I learned that and I, and I shared the information. Now, in this social media world, in this info marketing world, everybody takes the information for free, and now everybody's an expert. So I didn't want to associate myself or be called a social media expert or a social media person anymore. I said, I want to build something that it takes real skill to do. Nobody can just say I'm a filmmaker or nobody can say I can just edit videos. You know, it takes real skill, real creativity, real passion for it. And that's when I said, you know what, this is, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to learn all my information and I'm going to inspire people and I'm going to create, you know, visual, you know, content that's creative with a nice message behind it that, you know, that makes people all excited and stuff. So 
um that's 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 how that's my little story going on man and also i wanted to be a rapper bro no i'm kidding but like i love how the way rappers uh the way they market their stuff right with their music videos and stuff like that so for Mm -hmm. me i edit my own beats yeah with social social media how they do events their social media you know their concerts and things like that so i look at myself as you know an independent rapper trying to make it you know what i'm saying make it i'm trying to make it up and with that mm-hmm. mindset, I'm trying to make it. You will start your grind harder. You work harder. If you think you made it, man, honestly, man, you'll just become complacent. So for me, it's like that mentality of the hip hop world where I was like, okay, wow, I can't rap, right? But I can sure I edit my own beats. And then I also have a message that I can deliver. And also I can visual story tell. Huh. You know what I mean? I created kind of my own mm-hmm. way of doing things. So that's how that brings us to... I try, and it happens in the in the hip hop world, right? I mean, it you know Kanye and Drake, you know they they're not like right. traditional MCs the way like we thought about MCs right. in the eighties and nineties, but they freak it and they utilize their skill set and they utilize yeah. everything Visual. around them, right? Because the you visuals, have to now, the production, man. now the, it's their it's, image. Uh, it's hard to you know? to tell people to buy something where you could get downloaded for free online. You know, which is music. It's hard to monetize mm-hmm. music. So what they do is they use shows. They have shows. They do events. They do the visuals is what helps them build the brand. They put out the music for free because now it's content. It's no longer, you know. Of course, you can use it to yeah. to, to you know buy it and stuff like that as a product. But it's more of content now. When they put it out free, mm-hmm. the visuals it gets you emotionally involved, and then that's when you start you know going to their shows, buying their shirts. You know, you rep them on social media and so that's kind of the direction i'm going right now where and during this process um Mm -hmm. a lot of people are asking me to do videos for them you know so i have my own video production where now i'm helping people okay cool you know you do see the results with myself because i am the results right look at look at my facebook page if you look at the video put out you know i got how many shares it gets on the video how many views it gets on the video how many people love it you know the story behind it and some people, you know, want want the same experience, and they want they want their people to to feel that experience for them. So create videos for them, and it's a whole lot of it's it's amazing how things evolve. T- talking about it and looking back at it, it's 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 very interesting how things just continue to evolve, evolve. Yeah, no, it's uh, and no, and and one of the things I I share with my friends, and I want to thank Sam and Joe and some of our new friends uh, joining Race Talk Show here live on Blab. Uh, and always appreciate the people watching live as well as that'll be on the replay and also the podcast version of the show. Um, that, uh, you know, it's funny, Anthony, that we're, we're you're a millennial and I'm in, I think, Generation <laughs> X, I think, or whatever the, the title is. And, and one of the things that's a little frustrating uh, with the people that are kind of my generation, that's why I love to, to talk to young people with energy like you around these topics, is that they they feel like, the learning learning is over, you know, like they're doing whatever they're doing and they're just going to ride this out. And, you know, I do something completely different in my day job, but I, God damn it, I'm going to make this work. Um, so, uh, you know, so I, I, you know, taught myself how to podcast, taught myself how to do this kind of stuff, taught myself social media on and on and on. And, and it, and it's so true because you have to, you have to create not only the content and, and be raw and authentic. We're going to talk about that in a second. But that you really in all of these formats, I think the bottom line is that you have yeah. to give all of yourself. And, you know, just thinking about, you know, lemonade coming out over the weekend. First of all, totally not the way music artists, you released their music mm-hmm. a generation ago. Right. You know, comes Random, out on a Saturday yeah. randomly. It sort of just becomes like a buzz thing on social media. She incorporates the visuals. But at the end of the day, let's remember that at the end of the day, what ultimately, so she created some, there's some elements there of, 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 you know, the surprise, the shock, the, it being in this, you know, kind of multi-dimensional format, but what are ultimately people talking about for the last few days is all this, apparently this, this incredible authenticity and like mm-hmm. rawness with, you know, and who it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mess around with somebody exactly, like yeah. what's going on here. And it's that oh, now how much of it is, you know, they're yeah, on some level working, they are kind yeah. of playing around with us here a little bit, trying to make us figure it out. But it's it's that it's that it's that giving of them seeming like we would only expect her to go here and she went much further, um, is is kind of what is 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 what's getting that buzz going. So it is about 
Uh, so, so what would you, you know, it's interesting because one of the things that I find that people give comments to me about, again, people particularly with my generation is like, wow, you like to talk about your life and your insecurities and your, you know, and it's like, well, but no, th mm -hmm. this is not a game. This is about real life. And I don't have it all figured out in terms of all the business side. I'm not a super millionaire guru doing this yet, but I want people to understand that this is a real, you know, this is a real journey for me. And in a way it's a real journey for all of us. So how, how have you, uh, Anthony, uh, how have you uh, become comfortable with being so raw in the content man, I just, you create? I just know who I am. That's what it is. The truth is, man, I've played the fake game for a long time when I was in network marketing. What I mean by fake, you're not lying to people. It's just this false image. You know, you act, you talk a certain way. You act like you're somebody else. You're yeah. not. You do things that it's just, it's like, I don't really do that in real life. You know what I mean? And, you know, I was afraid to, to, to be me. I was afraid to say, hey, you know, I don't follow, you know, gurus. I like listening to Eminem. You know, I, I was afraid to tell people this because I would think they wouldn't do business with me. But the truth is, people do business with someone they can relate to, right? Like going back to the rap, uh, you know, to the, to, the, to the hip hop and music industry is a lot of people connect with these artists, right? Because they love the message they're saying. And now they think the message that they're saying is, is them as a person, right? The way they look, the way they dress. You know, you can hear the music. I listen to, uh, I don't know if you know this guy, this artist, but I listen to an artist called Joel Ortiz, right? He's a, uh, yeah, he's from, uh, sure, he's sure. from a group called Slaughterhouse. Yeah. He's an independent artist. He's signed to, to Eminem as a group. Sure. Well, my brother, uh, Anthony, my brother's in the uh, Army of the Pharaohs crew. Uh, so if you're familiar with Jedi Mind Tricks and some of those folks, so my, yeah, my brother's collaborated with Joel. My brother's oh, nice. performed in Europe with Joel Ortiz. Yeah, so they're this friendly guy. And, and so, yeah, he's part of that. He's this part guy, of that scene. He, uh, it, it was it was it was interesting because he he he's grown up in the uh, in New York City in Brooklyn. So he says things that I can relate to. He says things about the, you know, I don't know, the the certain train lines. He talks about New York. He talks about all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm digging this music, you know, I relate to it. So if you be yourself, you attract the person you are. You know what I mean? If you're a laid back dude, you'll you'll attract laid back right. people. If you uh, bring point. the energy like me, I love saying bring the energy. And that's where it came from, where, you know, it's like stop the hype. Stop all the bull, right? Stop all the BS. It's just bring the energy. That energy that you all pumped up for the moment, bring that energy with you. And then it'll bring out that raw, authentic side of you where now you're – attacking life with so much energy and it is it's interesting man it's um it's uh for me i think that's the only way you got to do it you got to be raw you got to be authentic and there's no other way of doing it i think people are afraid of what other people think about them they think they're going to get judged they think um you know i don't i don't want to do this because mm. these people are going to look at me like this or if i if i show them this they may not want to do business with me and the truth is let me tell you the truth is being raw and authentic does take longer it does take longer to build a brand because you got to cut through all these noise, all this bullshit that's going on, all these people who are just bullshitting to attract you. You know what I mean? Oh, come with me. I did this. I did this. I did this. Or oh, I'm like this. Or my image is like this. And the raw, the guy who's doing it raw and mm -hmm. authentic, he, you know, some people don't like that. They're like, uh, it's, it's not even cool. But then when you win, listen, when you win in your raw, authentic form, so many people gravitate towards that. They feel it. It's that energy, man. You talk raw. You feel it. And then you're, you're like, you just don't care what people think because you know that winning is the only thing that, 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 that's going to happen, right? You may fail here and there, and you, 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 you make some adjustments to pass those failures. But winning, you know you was built to win. You know what I'm saying? You was built to win. And when you know that, man, man... Nothing could stop you on this journey, bro. No, and uh, one of the things that is so interesting, the biggest feedback I get from having guests like you, Anthony, and, and others on the show is that people will reach out to me on social media or you know friends of mine and say, oh, I saw your show, I listened to your show, and I, I, I could relate so much to your guests. I love your guests because I can relate right. to them because they're not full of shit. I mean, that's kind of the bottom line with it, but but the bottom line is they have the courage to to kind of go there and, yeah. and just, again, be authentic and honest and raw. And so few of us right. are taught that that's OK, because we have to have this image and we feel like we have to kind of not show weakness, especially people from our community that, you know, are kind of 
the leaders in their family and the ones that are trying to get out the neighborhood and trying to, you know, they're taught that trying to get as far away from from these these uh, warts as possible and and again kind of be this image that right. you probably none of us really are is the way to go. And then then when they see people that are just being honest and real, mm -hmm. they're very attracted to that. So they, 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 even if they don't have the, our, our, the people I have on the show may have the biggest audiences or were the quickest to success. The people that, that are part of their tribe are, are incredibly loyal Absolutely. because they're real with them and they, 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 mm -hmm. they have the relatability. So I think that's, that's critically important. And one of the things that I learned about kind of right. being vulnerable, if that makes sense and, and being honest with people that you don't have it figured out, I was in a, for my day job, my job at a staff retreat in Washington, they seen it was basically like this kind of quirky, kind of antique, uh, uh, mm -hmm. like bed and breakfast kind of place. So it had like, it was just kind of an odd place. It had all these, uh, you know, sort of antiques everywhere. And it just was kind of like this quirky, almost kind of felt like a funny, like, like a, you know, it had secret <laughs> passageways. It was kind of like, <laughs> like a haunted house kind of thing, but it was a cute place. So the lady that's run the play has an interesting history. I don't remember all the history, but basically, the lady that comes out looks like an actress that's in a movie that, okay, who's the person that runs this little crazy house? And it's right, this right. like crazy little lady. And and she basically goes to the story and says, you know, I had this dream about having this home and I guess it had some sort of historical significance. It has these like theme rooms. And and she said, I just went to people because I said I didn't have, I didn't have the $300,000 to buy the place, but I was just honest with people. And, and, and because she was open about what she didn't have, she, people helped her fill in the gaps because she was honest and, and sincere about what she wanted to do to uplift yeah. this, you know, keep this, this whole building going. So it's, uh, I, so I went from at first appearances thinking she was like an oddball right, right, to right. learning something from her. So it was a great lesson for me about, you gotta be straight up. So I tell people that I'm, you know, potential partners, like, look, I have skills in this area. I don't have skills in so this means, area. So yeah. let's try to figure out how we can collaborate. No, 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 Anthony, I was going to say the, the talk to me. Another form of raw and authentic is not being afraid to be who you are. That's what it is. You know what I mean? Like, okay, what what are you actually good at? And what are you what are you passionate about? What are you good at? What are your skills? And you know, not everybody has to know about the personal life, right? Not everybody can say, Oh, look, I'm not doing this, I'm not doing this. Like when I was eighteen years old, you know, I didn't have it all together, right? When I was you know, I was a skinny dude. I was playing football and, and I was trying to tell people, hey, I'm going to get rich. And my, you know, my suit is all baggy and it's all big. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that, you know, you know, you know when you fake it, people see it. When you fake, when you're not the person you at you acting and you yeah. say, oh, I'm like this. And even in a suit, yeah. because you even look stupid in a suit. You know what I mean? You look weird. And people are like, it's you. People think, oh, let me get the, these type of clothes. Let me talk like this. Let me act like I'm into this stuff. And that's why I'm like, wow, people who are actually winning can point out the people who are losing because they could be like, oh, dude, I was there. You know what I mean? I, can, I, I was there. I can see him. I can see his face. That's not him, right? And the people who are passionate about being themselves and who are willing to say, you know what? F that, right? I'm not going to talk like this. I'm not going to look like this. I'm going to be me and I'm going to win my way. Right. It's going to take longer. It's going to take, you know, it's going to long It's a hard grind. But the people who relate to you, they will follow you to the very end, man, because you're authentic. You're not trying to be someone, someone else. And then right. they follow this false image thinking you're somebody you're not, you know, and then you get real uncomfortable with yourself. You don't. you're not open to people. You're very, you're very okay. in a box and nobody knows really what you do. You're just like, who's this guy? Right. So. That's one way of being raw and authentic, man. Does not be afraid of, of who you are. Yeah, no, uh, I want to give Anthony, um, uh, before we get into the next set of, uh, the next segment of Race Talk Show, I want to give Anthony an opportunity to uh, let people know about his social media profile, what he's doing out there online before we get to the next set of questions. And then uh, we've got some, Sam Teague, uh, our, our friend on the, on the chat, is asking some, teeing up some great questions for Anthony to answer in a second. And then I've got a quick announcement. So Anthony, remind people where they can find you on social media and, and where's your uh, web platform. People can check out these great videos um, and content you're producing. Instagram, man. Instagram is bringing the energy. Uh, I really want to connect with people on Instagram, trying to really build that up. Um, so Snapchat, um, Snapchat is uh, bring the energy. Um, website, Um 
yeah man and then you know from snap from instagram you'll find me on facebook so it's uh everything links to facebook it's all together so instagram is the place man i'll follow back um, yeah no i'm gonna ask you a question about instagram because i i'm i'm i haven't dedicated the right. time that i need to to that that uh to that platform so i have a cool. few questions for you myself on that and i'll get the sam teague's questions in a second for our very special guest bring the energy no doubt about it anthony manaya from Anthony and and uh, bring the energy on a lot of social media platforms. Um, I did want to let people know that, uh, first of all, you know, thank you again for watching Race Talk Show. You can check us out live uh, most Tuesdays and Thursday nights, <laughs> unless I'm traveling for work. And uh, you can catch all of our uh, the replays of the show as well as the podcast version of the show at BigBrotherRay.com. Check out BigBrotherRay.com. And I did want to let people know that I um, uh, just came back from a very exciting uh, you can catch on our YouTube page. Uh, uh, just did a podcast workshop at Hispanicize, which is like the Latin social media, uh, South by Southwest conference in Miami every spring. You need to get to that conference, Anthony, next year. We got to get you down there. Uh, but the um, what came out of that, besides a great event, and again, we've got videos to that, that'll that show people the, the energy that we, and uh, the content that we provided there, but a group of podcasters, including Marcy Quintana from Hispano Entrepreneur, Felix Montalada from Potential Millionaire and Arturo Nava from Logo to Dream podcasts, respectively, and platforms are coming together with me to found Somos Podcaster. So we're going to be using that hashtag and we're going to be having a webinar and, and creating an online com uh, community for people to teach people how to podcast and help us grow our platforms together. So really excited about that one. Let people know that we got to collaborate. We got to build with each other. So, uh, Anthony, we got to figure out a way to get you to podcast. Get Get you podcasting because you got a lot of a great message and, and you've got that New York <laughs> swag, dog. I mean, I gotta give you, you know, I'm a Philly guy, but I give you your love, you know. So uh, and uh, you know, some of my best friends are guys just like you, just a little older. So um, really appreciate you having me on the show. So let's get to Sam's questions. The first one here from our, our friend Sam Teague Anthony is what motivates you to do what you do as an artist? And that's mm -hmm. something you're very proud of, is you consider yourself first and foremost an artist. So uh, that's a great question uh, from what Sam Teague. What motivates me is is looking at the the fact that we can create anything from zero, anything like the world is yours, kind of right on the in this online world. I feel like in order for me to do what I want, I need to do. I need to be myself, and I have so much things in my mind, and so many ways, like so much things that I think about that I want to give it to the world, right? I, I want to be things, just random things I think about. Like for example, my Facebook post, right? I random things I think about. I just I just pick up the phone, say what I have to say that's on my mind, and send it out, right? And then so many people love it. They'll share it. They'll like it. You know, so many people comment on it. It's simply because it's just some things in my mind. So for me, it's like I feel like I have a message that people need to hear, and I feel like um, it's just the feedback, the feedback, the way people are like, man, dude, we don't hear this from you. Oh, dude, you, you're so different. You think a certain way. You know, I don't say these things about myself, right? It's just – People tell me this stuff, and I'm like, hey, maybe I do got something different, right? Maybe I do got something that nobody else has, right? And I share these messages, and as I keep going and going, create my videos, and more people show me love, that inspires the shit out of me, man. Um, also, I want to – I just – I just – I was just like – I don't know, man. I just, I just want people to win. You know what I'm saying? I just want people to win, bro. And um, that's, that's, that's pretty much it for that one. And the second question, should I read that? I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll read it for you. What's your daily workflow for your creativity? Which is another great question from Sam. Thank you, Sam. And again, anyone that's on the live chat can join Cam to uh, join on Cam okay. to, to speak to Um. Directly. So, what's my daily workflow for my creativity? Is he asking what do I do to get creative? Or, um, okay. It could be. Yeah. How, what? What? How do you right. get into the so mode and kind of what your day looks like? Is there a certain day that you do right. the content creation and? A well, certain part of the day you're doing other stuff. Give give us well, a day in the life, brother. Day every day is different. Either I'm making, I'm helping a client, I'm editing a client video, doing some video work for a client, or strategizing with them. Or for me myself, I sit with my guys and I say, "Look, this is the video. This is what we got to do. I have an idea. They put in there. You know, I I kind of my team. I help them. Like I kind of mold them in a way to think to know how I think, right and you know, with themselves, they're obviously different people, but I want them to know what I would think, right? How I think like, but in their own perspective, right? From their side. Okay, I know Anthony thinks like this. So what if we added this, 
right? So I kind of like love doing that stuff, and I and I, we write it down, and then we start getting to shooting. Um, but as far as creativity, I get cre- my I get inspired by so many different things. Like I I can't watch honestly, man. I can't watch uh, somebody's video, or I can't listen to somebody's podcast. It's not just like honestly, I don't. Want, I'm not saying that just to, to be cool or anything like that. It's just I I get inspired differently. I listen to music lyrics, certain certain songs that make me visualize certain things. I actually read comic books to not to 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 because cool. I like it and I'm a nerd or anything like that, which is not wrong with it. I read it to study it in a way it's like, okay, this picture, th- these this is a book that's created based on pictures and a few words in each picture that has my attention, right? That is making me use my mind in a way to create a film in my head. Right. Well, reading this thing, you see each each picture in each box. And I'm like, OK, wow, it is it, 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 it's making me think. Right. Because I'm visualizing this stuff in a whole film in my head and seeing how it would play out my own way. I'm like, hmm, I get I learn from certain things when I create my own pictures online on social media. I learn certain wordings from from comic books. I learn certain things that like, wow, this is very interesting. So, see, I get inspired by films. I watch, uh, you know, certain films where I'm like, wow, this shot. And I, you know, I'm not, I don't know the, 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 the names of the shot, right? Where this is long shot, this is short shot, this is above shot. I don't know the names of it. But what I do know is when I see it in a film, I say, yeah. okay, how can we create this shot? I bring my team in. I say, hey, dude, look, I want this shot right here. And I'll play, replay that part from the film. I say, how can we get that long shot that's like this, that's going over like that, right? And then I use that and I use that to put it in my own work. You know what I'm saying? Um, when it comes to studying people like winners, man, like, like I, Dwayne Johnson, is, it's, it's a great one. This guy, The Rock, dude, he's a beast. You know what I mean? I look at his stuff. Um, yes, I talk about- yes, yeah. yeah, so Reinvention. Had a, I mean, had a, had a devastating knee injury, lost an NFL career, and reinvented himself and made himself much bigger. And now he's stars as a former NFL star yeah, in movies and TV shows, you know, yeah, as well yeah. as being a great wrestler. I mean, one so, of the legendary you know, wrestlers. I, you look at people like that, like you have, like I get inspired by small things. And also I'm going to tell you people the truth, non-driven people motivate me. And let me explain. And this is very different, right? I, I, I can't watch a mm. Tony Robbins video. Uh, I, this is Greg Cardone videos or anything like that. I can't watch those. Right. Because I, I for some reason, I just don't it doesn't hit me the way that an, an uninspired person does. Right. I, I kind of came up with I'm going to tell you how I came up with the film, The Awakening, my last film I created two minutes. It was short. But the, the concept, I'll explain the concept in a second. But I look at people and say, man, you're not driven at all. And I study these people and I study the way they talk. I study the way they say things. I study their body language. I study the things they do because I don't want to be that. I don't want to look like that, right? So I, I, I study, yeah. I'm like, dude, this guy, whoa. I don't want to be that. And if you study people who are losing, and you, you know, this is, this is some weird, this is other weird shit that goes on in my head, which I rarely talk about, but it's interesting how this question is asked and I'm trying to give the raw, authentic uh, answer to this question. It's kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, why? This, you, this person has the ability to change at any moment. And if I understand they don't know, okay, if you don't know, but when you try to educate them and they shut it down, it's like, whoa, study that. Look at that. Why do they do that? You know, I want to wake up earlier than people because for some reason, most of the people lose sleep in a lot. Right. I want to work out and I want to go to the gym. I want to be fit because I want to I want to I wanted to boost my confidence. And I also wanted to I just want to get healthy. Right. Because most people who are losing aren't. Right. I, I just look at it and that's not judging people in a way that no, it's just studying the majority of the people. Like, OK, it's not saying, you know, if you don't work out, you're yeah, losing. No, I'm trying not. It's just these habits. Yeah. yeah I mean, certain, these certain, trends are real. That's right. And also when you're not healthy, that also speaks to probably you're and not happy with what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. You don't feel like you're being challenged. Exactly. You don't feel like you have those outlets. And it goes back to what you said earlier around people that are in miserable jobs. I remember being in a banking job and like my summer job in college. And then on the lunch break, instead of per- people enjoying themselves, they were so bummed out that they had this boring banking job that they would like sleep in like, you know, right, they would right. sleep in a corner because they just were like, they just, they were just so bummed out and depressed yeah. and low energy. And it's like a beautiful day. And you, 
And uh, but on the flip side, when you do what you love, I mean, I can yeah, sit here for hours and talk man. to people and and do this kind of stuff because it's so motivating and it's you're passionate about. But I think the other thing is they yeah. connect with like many people. You know, you ain't on blab. You're not ask Sam's not asking. He's got a questions because you know he's trying to he's right. trying to go for it too on some level. So we find like minded people on it these is. platforms. So it's it's really interesting. Anthony, I want to ask you. Uh, uh, since you talked about Instagram, I wanted to ask you about a few platforms you're you have a particular expertise and give us uh, for people trying to build their brands and uh, build their reach with with a with an outlet like a platform like Instagram. Give us give us a tip or two about how you're how you found uh, some best practices that have resonated with your, well, your what tribe I like on to Instagram. Do is, again, I look at comic books, right? What kind of photos, what kind of things that catch me? Right now, some people may open a comic book and may be like, what the hell, dude? Like, I don't know what I'm looking at, right? But for me, I look at certain details. I say, oh, I like this. I like the way this guy did this. I like the way the photo did this. And I like the way he showed the background on here. It's, it's a real weird, creative way of thinking. But what I like to do is I, I just, man, you just got to you, you gotta either be educational, right? You're going to educate someone. You're going to put out value. You got to be – you just don't want to be someone – who is just on the stream and like, you, you know, they just scroll up real quick, right? You have to, you have to, you have to, what's going to stop people? Yeah. What's remarkable, right? What video, what can you take from this blab as, in a video form? That's like, oh, dude, I got to go watch that. What is that? Right? What, you know, what hashtag is going to get you discovered? What photos creatively, because it's a creative platform. People should be playing with the filters and creating some certain, you know, remarkable photos that they, nobody sees. Right. Because if you don't yeah. do that, then why are you on the platform? The platform is not just for pictures. It's for creative pictures. And that's why it has all these filters and all, you got to use all those things. Yeah. So I'll tell people is get creative. And it's about creating yeah. a story. It's about like you talked about being a story. It's telling a story perfect, with a picture, perfect. even if it's just like a, a comic book. You're telling a story with a picture and you have a little, you right. have a little written stuff there. And what's going to keep getting people to come back to like it, share it. The thing is, man, the people like things that that inspire them, that make them laugh, that's true, educational. You know, if you, you come up with some boring stuff that's not you, it's like, oh, come on, man. Like, nobody wants to see that. You know what I mean? So that's what I would give for you, man. Just get creative, bro. Get creative and uh, give know your audience. Know what they want. If they want to get inspired, give them some inspiration. That's right. The other thing about, it, the other thing about Instagram that I, that I want our audience to – to think about in particular, I find this on Instagram is that there's, there's people that are giving, there's so many creative people that are, that are actually producing a lot of content uh, that they could, they could, they could use to elevate their brand and they're just doing it. So it's like, it's almost like when you talk about being an artist, it's like, well, but that's part of it, but they just don't realize that their skills or their abilities True. are marketable. You know, they're just kind of doing it and just sort of giving it away and not, they're not thinking about it from an entrepreneurial perspective. They're just like, I think about it, I'm like how much money these people, you know, these, these platforms use have made off people just giving away all this free content. And either they just think, well, I'm a starving artist or they just don't think of themselves. They just don't realize right. how they could monetize their content. So I just def- definitely for people that are doing a good job on Instagram, think about what you could be doing to parlay Either you know your talents, your artistry, your you gotta, you gotta um, be a business or just your well. message uh, to build your own online yeah. platform. Absolutely, absolutely. So, Anthony, uh, you know one of the things I'm so impressed by you uh, over the last particularly year is you really have honed your skills mm-hmm. in filmmaking, and just wanted to just wanted to get a tip or two from you in terms of people that maybe have started to do YouTube videos and want to do more utilize a vid, uh, you know, a produce video, uh, for their platforms. Uh, give us a, give us a tip or two on, on well, what's videos, worked for you. Once I realized that, you know, the only way, the best way to learn is by doing create films. What are you passionate about? Right. What are you, again, it goes to the passion stuff. Like, Oh, for example, I want to tell you how the awakening film was created. So I wanted to do a film on capitalism and this goes with your question. I wanted to do a film on capitalism. Right. So I wanted to talk about why people should be entrepreneurs and things like that. So we started filming and then I saw this guy said, wait, I told the crew, the crew, like the guys, I said, wait, let this guy cross the street. He crossed the street. And I was like, wow, what a zombie in my mind. I said, what a zombie. His face just looks like he's not all there. He's not present. I was like, man, what a zombie, man. This guy's lost. 
And I said, let's stop shooting. Let's stop shooting. Let's do a film on zombies because I just got an idea. And I took out the paper. We wrote it down. Look, this is what we need to do. This is how we could do it. Right? So you'll find inspiration in the smallest moments and you do it. Right? What do you want to do a film on? What can you afford? Right? What is your budget? Right? What can you do? You know? Um, you don't want people, you know, if you can't afford certain things, you don't want people going starving broke, right? Do work with what you can. But a lot of, I want to tell this, this is one advice I want to give is, it's not about the kind of equipment you have. It's what you do with the equipment you do have, right? Because a lot of people say, oh, I don't have this kind of equipment mm. you have, Anthony. Oh, I don't do this. I learned editing by watching. I had one of my guys edit my video for a week, one video for a week, and I just watched them. And they asked questions, what's this for? No, no, I just watched them. And I learned editing and I learned more, right? More. And then I started doing myself, doing myself. And then I became great at it. And then, you know, shooting the film, I was like, man, I only have this camera. I was like, I'm going to make great videos with just one camera. And then until you get the resources, you can upgrade. There's people like, I don't have a camera. I don't know editing. Well, you learn. You learn editing, right? Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. Whatever you have right. the idea in your mind, whatever you want to create. It's amazing what you can yeah, do with that's an iPhone what I'm saying. nowadays. Let me tell you. On video, you can that's yeah. where you start. Make the best. You can make good Instagram videos, you yeah. can make good make vines. The best story you know, you and, and there's editing yep. apps on your phone. You know, you can start from so there. That's kind Absolutely. Of what it is. Absolutely. So uh give it give us give us another uh give us another tip, Anthony, about uh for people that are trying to develop their their storytelling right. skills. How maybe they already have a following on Instagram on social media, maybe they you know, but now they, they want to take it to another level and and transfer their either their blogging or their or their visual content in, in a in a well, video form. Give give them a, another another nugget of information. Depending they be on what people do, um, I want people to listen to themselves more, right? So many people are reading so many books, they're watching so many videos, they're doing all this type of stuff, but they're never actually doing. And the minute you start looking in the mirror and say, "Man, yeah. I'm going to create the content that I want to create." Right. I want to create. The, I want to say things that I want to say. I want I want to do things differently. There's no right way of doing things. I want people to understand that. Who said, you know, you got to sit down and just do a regular video like this? No, I want to create something visual. I want to run in the forest and, <laughs> and show people, you know, me running in the forest and zombie yeah. noises. I want to create films. Right. But there's no rules. And I want people to understand that there's no rules to what you can do and whatnot. So many people stay in this box like. Okay, you watch this guy because he's doing it like that. Is that quote unquote the right way? You can do things your own way, man. And then once you find your own way, you find your own voice. And then you listen to the feedback. They like it. Holy shit, let me do more of it. They like this kind of photo. Holy shit, let me do more of it. Right? I never, like, they, they're telling you what they want. Wow, this is a remarkable photo. I like it. Right? Or this is a remarkable video. Okay, let me give them more videos like this. And that's how you build and build and build. And then eventually you find your own voice. You're not listening to these people who are telling you all this type of stuff. You need to do it like this. It's like, no, you figure out what works for you and do it. And don't be afraid because the minute you are afraid and you, the minute you get scared, you're not an artist, right? You start, you're thinking you're afraid of, because you're going to be in this box. You're going to, you're afraid to get judged. You're afraid. No, be an artist, go out there and say something or do something, take it, push it a little bit far. Raise the bar, right? Because you may just win. And when you win, people are like, dude, this guy, this girl, they did it legit. They did it being themselves. They did it being authentic. They, they did it being raw. There's nobody like them because they don't consume from everybody. They consume from the person they see in the mirror every day. So that's right. That's what I give. And that's so, and that's so fundamental. And, and particularly people that, that don't have the, the right. standard story, right? Whether it's education or career. And I tell them, you know, again, it goes back to what you just said. It's like exactly. nobody has your story, and 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 the and the gr and the grind story is a lot more yeah. relatable, frankly, and can be more marketable. I mean, look, I mean, going back to the hip hop reference, that you know, one of the reasons that I mean, Eminem can submit, yeah. and he's incredible on that on the lyrical side of it. But why, at the end of the day, why the is he story. Eminem? Is that he's he's hundred percent. Yeah. You know everything about Eight him. Miles, you know everything yeah. about him. You know his warts. You know his relationship with his mom. You know his relationship with his <laughs> woman. You know his relationship with his daughter. You know being the white boy in hip hop. I mean, you know everything about him. He's an open hip hop. And that that resonates. People with people. look at hip hop. Yeah. You know that resonates with people. So that's exactly right. So the the last thing I wanted to ask you, Anthony, was about <laughs> um 
your relationship with your client base besides the content you're yeah. creating? You work with brands. I'm curious how uh, a guy this young uh, who, who built it from nothing, uh, how you were able to attract yeah. clients to work with you. I'm just curious. I'm sure there's young content creators out there curious how you were able to make that transition to, to work with other, well, other results, brands. man. Results. I think you should build something with leverage. And I, I, I love saying this because I created videos. I help people with videos videos to get results with it. You know, there's people who want to, oh, I want to do this. I want to be this type of guy. So go get the results. Go get it. And then you'll attract the people because your fans are clients. Honestly, they'll become clients. Your fans That's will right. become clients if they trust you. And, oh, man, I like this guy's work. Anthony, do you do some kind of video work? The funny thing is I don't promote myself. I don't promote my, hey, buy this. I don't promote, hey, I'll do a video for you. Because I'm only building the content and attract the audience. But I get clients. I get deals. Because of me putting out my videos for people liking them. They say, hey, man, I want a video just like that. Can you do that for me? Yeah, I can. You know? And that's what it is, man. Build something with leverage. So many people, oh, how can I be a motivational speaker? It's like, dude, seriously, you're asking how to be a motivational speaker? Become someone who's motivating. Like, not by your words. Just the lifestyle you live. The person you are. The thing, the... the the way you think, the way you navigate, mm -hmm. you know, like, man, like that's motivating, right? Not just the words you say, you read from a book and say, oh, I want to be a motivational speaker now. It's like, no, you know, filmmaker, create films, social media expert, sell, 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 <laughs> right? Sell on social media. Go ahead and make a hundred grand or six figures or a million dollars. You know what I mean? Go ahead, make, make that money. And then you can, you, you know, you tell people, hey, look, this is how I made such and such. You have the leverage. So that's what I say, man. That's how you attract clients is with leverage. And those are people who don't have leverage, go build that leverage. Go ahead and, te you know, become the person you're trying to teach or become the person you're trying to do. Uh, tell people, hey, be this. Or you want to teach fitness, be a fit person. You can't, you know what I'm saying? You can't teach fitness. And you you know what I mean? Like, yeah. come on, you know? So yeah. I think it's, right. you gotta, yeah. You gotta walk the walk, Some yeah. people like, right. there's this one dude, I saw him teaching fitness and he's, I'm like, dude, no, no offense, man, but are you are you working out like that? Are you eating right? Like, you know, and you know, you're teaching all this fitness stuff. It's because you know a lot of people go, they follow the market. This is what the market likes. Okay, let me do this. Right, this is what's easier. Let me sell info product because info products are easier than being a filmmaker. You know what I mean? Like, do 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 what you do what you have leverage in, man. I think, um, and what you're good at. And then there's that question. You know, that question wouldn't make sense if you do that. You know what I mean? Like, of course, you attract people because you got results. That's right. Uh, this has been a fantastic conversation with uh, uh, the, the, the Bring the Energy man of social media, which you can find at Bring the Energy on many social media platforms and anthonymanaya.co. Anthony, uh, any final words of wisdom for our race talk show? Community? Just want to say I appreciate everybody being on or everybody who's watching uh, or listening. Um, really means a lot that you would really want to listen to this podcast. And uh, also, man, just uh, listen to you, man. Listen to you. And if you have to watch, watch this or listen to this five more times to really understand what I'm talking about when I speak about hip hop culture, when I speak about, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror, all this type of stuff, really go back and listen to this, man. That's right. And uh, Anthony Manaya, just uh, proud of you, brother, and uh, look forward to uh, collaborating with you in the future. And next time in New York City, I'll definitely give you, I'll, I'll reach out to you and we'll try to, we'll definitely try to connect. You've been listening to Anthony Manaya, bring the energy on a lot of social media platforms and anthonymanaya.co. He's, he dropped a lot of knowledge here. Go back to our hip hop references, a lot of quotes, a lot of, there's a lot we can get from this and really appreciate it. And, his powerful message because, you know, Anthony, I do this show because I know so many incredibly talented people and they, they, you know, they're just, they're just in, they're in yeah. the cage and they're just bouncing and they want to get out there. They want to stick their head out. They want to fly and they're scared to do it. And they, you know, and uh, we just got to get them out there because they have so much to share. So a little bit of a push and, and some hard work and again, finding your voice uh, and, and really looking for, you know, having a community like, our community here is, uh, I think, going to be very valuable for them. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you again for the people watching the live show. And uh, thank you all again watching 
um, race talk show and uh, check out on social media the hashtag Somos Podcaster for my uh, for the rest of uh, and other announcements coming from that community. Thanks again and Take have care, a wonderful Ray. night. Thanks for having me, brother.